Good morning, guys. I thought today I would just sit down and talk a little bit about puppy adoption <laughs> and adopting puppies from a breeder. If you're looking for a puppy, uh, here is a list of recommended questions, books, uh, just general guidelines for choosing a good breeder. Grab some coffee or tea, whatever it is you drink. Let's have a little puppy chat. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. If you are new, my name is Mary. I live in Indiana with my husband, Nick. I'm a dog mom, obviously, <laughs> a Disney enthusiast, and I do just kind of lifestyle week vlogs, all that good stuff. So if that sounds good to you, I would love to have you as a subscriber. I'm trying to get to 100 and I'm like this close. So if you want to help me out, <laughs> I'd really appreciate it. Obviously, that's a really good spot to chew on your ball. <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. Okay. <laughs> and now they're gonna play. I mean, why not? Also, if you love this dog bed as much as I do, I did a video about it recently, which I will link above for you. In any case, all right, topic of the day. <laughs> Breeders, finding a good breeder and puppies. It took me a long time to convince Nick that we should get a puppy. Once he was finally on board, we wanted to make sure that we do it right. So my number one advice, if you're looking for a puppy, is to do research. Please do research. There are quizzes you can take that will help you figure out what kind of a dog is good for you, what kind of a dog is good for your lifestyle, where you live, if you're in the city, if you have a house with a big yard, like It'll help you figure out all of that stuff. When we took the test, I think the first thing that popped up was, I can't remember if it was a French Bulldog or something like that, but we looked into French Bulldogs and discovered that they have a lot of health issues that could be expensive, which is not something that we need. I don't know why they get so excited to play when I'm filming, <laughs> but every time they do. Yeah, so we looked into French Bulldogs first. Uh, they are super cute, they're very laid back, um, but they have a lot of health issues. So um, our next thing was Boston Terriers we started looking into. And they're very similar to a Frenchie, but with fewer issues. Like um, after looking into it more, we decided Boston Terriers were our ideal dog. And it did say something about them being calm. <laughs> Check out their genetic predispositions things that are genetically known to go wrong, basically, <laughs> like um, Boston Terriers have a, a thing in their knees or like a tendon thing that needs to be repaired a lot of times. Um, they also obviously have eye issues because their eyes are so big, um, just stuff like that. Look for those things. Find out about how much it, a, a procedure might cost that they would possibly need in the future so you know kind of what you're getting into. Um, and then check out their character traits because if you want a very snuggly dog, don't get like a little independent terrier kind of dog. Like a, some dachshunds are really independent. Um, Boston Terriers are not, <laughs> generally. Generally speaking, I do know some that will that are not super, super cuddly. And check out energy level. If you just like to kind of chill out in the house, don't get you know, a husky because they need lots and lots of um, exercise. They need a job to do because generally huskies are working dogs. They pull sleds. That's a real thing. And it's in like, it's in their genetics. So just do your research and find a dog that works for you. I highly recommend this book. <laughs> we started watching um, Caesar's show as soon as we started deciding on getting a puppy because we wanted to do it right. Like obviously you can tell I I have been through this book a lot. I have bookmarked them. We have this book on audio 
I listened to it for months before we got our puppy because I just wanted to memorize it. I wanted to do things properly. It tells you like a good way to bring your puppy home, to introduce them to the house. A lot of people bring the puppy home and they're just like, here's your new house, go explore. And then they wonder why the dog thinks that they own everything because you just gave them everything. Like the dog psychology and dog um, behavior is just, it's so simple. Just do some research. This guy made it easy. He has an audio book. Go listen to it if you don't have time to read. I like to have the book because I wanted to like go to my bookmarks and flip through and be like, oh yeah, that's what I'm supposed to be doing this week. Like they have different weeks of um, puppy development and stuff so you can reference that. Like what, what should we be expecting this week in our puppy's life? So handy. <laughs> There's also another dog book by Caesar that I will, um, I'll put a picture in here so you can see what it is. Can't remember off the top of my head, but I listened to that one a lot on Audible as well. But do, do some research about dog and puppy behavior, the first year of their puppy's life, that sort of stuff. Very helpful. And then when it comes to finding your puppy, if you're looking for a specific breed, I would suggest going to AKC Marketplace. They um, will help you find breeders that they think are good. Um, they do have to fill out like an application and stuff, but that does not always indicate a good responsible breeder. <laughs> it just means that they passed the initial test of the AKC to make sure that um, they were, you know, reputable. But AKC Marketplace does not require you, the breeder, to um, do genetic testing, which I think it should be a requirement. It's a requirement for me to suggest a breeder. The breeding stock that you're using needs to be tested to see if they have a mutated gene that could pass down to puppies, which could lead to diseases and issues. So don't be afraid to ask questions <laughs> to your breeder. And a red flag, if the breeder is like, I've been doing this for 13 years or whatever, like I know what I'm talking about and he, he or she gets defensive, that is a red flag to me. And that happened with Albert. <laughs> we found Albert from an AKC Marketplace listing. And I called and she answered the phone very rudely. It was very bizarre. She was, I can't remember what she said, but it was kind of along the lines of like, uh, yes, or something like that. And I was like, I saw your listing on AKC Marketplace. And then she was, then she was nice. So I was like, okay. <laughs> So she told me about two puppies that she had still and somebody was coming to look at both of them the next day and she would let me know which one um, they did not pick and that was Albert and I'm so glad Albert is just perfect but there's no way that she does genetic testing. <laughs> Albert at three years old had a mast cell tumor that we had to have removed. He's the most perfect dog. He is my canine soulmate and I love him so much but his breeder did not do him any favors. When we brought him home, we had issues with Giardia for months. It was impossible to get rid of, which is a pretty typical puppy issue. It could happen to any puppy, but I, I don't feel like this breeder did a great job with like cleanliness, keeping the puppy area clean. When we took Albert home, he had never been outside. Like there's just so many little things that a breeder should do and I'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. But in any case, AKC Marketplace is good, but you still have to do your research and you have to ask questions to make sure that you um, are getting a good quality breeder. All right, so what to ask potential breeders that you might be adopting a puppy from? First on the list, do they do genetic testing or DNA testing? If you ask them that and they say, um, our puppies don't go to the vet unless they need to, then you know you have a problem because they don't know what DNA testing is. It is testing on the parents to see if they have a mutated gene that could pass to any puppies that they uh, produce, which means money that you're gonna have to spend. So um, ask them that question and they better say yes <laughs> and know what it is. Um, how long have you been breeding? That is a very good question. If somebody just started, you know, last year, maybe move on. Um, are the parents on site and can I meet them? Very important question. Somebody who, it, you just want both parents to be on site and you want to meet them to see what their uh, disposition is, their character. When we met Albert's parents, 
They were both in kennels and uh, they seemed very chill, very nice, but like everything just seemed very odd with that breeder. Red flags all over the place. <laughs> also ask how do they socialize the puppies? The puppies should be getting interaction with children, with adults, with other dogs, because that is how they're gonna learn how to be good grown-up dogs. Um, they should spend lots of time outside. They need to be just, they just need to experience things in the first eight weeks of life because that's gonna set them up for the rest of their lives. Like it's the foundation. They need that socialization and experience of new, you know, environments and things. If they're just living in your bathroom for eight weeks, like I'm pretty sure Albert did in the bathroom and like, I think they were allowed in the living room to play and stuff. That's not good enough. <laughs> so, and luckily it really, it didn't have any negative effects that I can tell on Albert, but some puppies, will the puppy have its first round of vaccines and will it be dewormed? Those are pretty standard, even backyard breeders do that generally. And backyard breeders are just people who, um, they're not like a puppy mill, but they're just people who don't do genetic testing. They just sort of breed because they want to make a little extra money and because they love puppies. Like, I'm sure they all have good intentions, but they could be doing it better. The idea of breeding is to better the breed and it's expensive so if you find a puppy who is only like 400 500 dollars you know that that is a backyard breeder because genetic testing is not cheap um, they need to be doing that they need to be taking the dogs to the vet i'm not a breeder but from the research that i've done it's just expensive like and certain dogs like boston terriers and frenchies have to sometimes have cesareans to remove the puppies because their heads are so big just stuff like that it just gets it just gets expensive so if you're only buying a 400 or 500 dollar puppy it's like uh, it's just a red flag look out for that <laughs> nobody wants to spend a thousand dollars on a puppy but if you're spending less than a thousand dollars i would be asking a lot of questions a good breeder should have a contract they should also have an application that every potential adopter needs to fill out but at the very least a good breeder should have a contract and it should state something like a health guarantee for the first year and um, something about reclaiming policies. So at least Albert's breeder did have a contract. She did have a one year health guarantee. So like if the puppy died or something. Um, and then a lot of breeders will put in the contract that if your puppy does die prematurely, they require you to have an autopsy so that they know what happened. And then if for some reason you can't keep your puppy, there should be something in the contract that says, absolutely bring the puppy back to me, the breeder. That should be in the contract. Ask for references. If, if they're weird about references, like the people we got Edie from use us as a reference all the time. And I know several other people who have puppies from her breeder and they're all raving reviews as well. So ask for references. They should not be, they should be proud to give you references if you ask for them. If they get defensive, red flag. <laughs> um, can we contact you after we bring the puppy home? So a new puppy is crazy. It is super hard. It is what I assume is very similar to bringing home a newborn baby because they need you for everything. They, you have to constantly watch them. And it can be tough. It, I mean, you might have questions like, should my dog's poop be mushy and runny? And obviously you can Google those things, but it's nice to know that you can reach out to your breeder because they just spent eight weeks with this puppy and they know, they know a few things. So, and they've seen <laughs> so many puppies. So that's a good question to ask and they should be happy and willing to answer any questions that you have after you take the puppy home. It shouldn't be like, hey, here's your puppy, bye they should be helpful. The breeder may ask you about your lifestyle and home situation. Reputable breeders will want to make sure the breed suits you. Absolutely. That goes along with the application and the survey that you might have to take to see, do you have a small apartment? Do you live in the city? Do you have a yard with a fence? If you don't have a fence, they might not let you have a puppy because some breeders just that's their prerogative. So, and when can the puppy come home? Their answer should be anywhere between eight and 12 weeks before eight weeks is too soon. That is a red flag, don't go to that breeder. Um, they need the full eight weeks, if not more, 
to socialize with their litter and their mom and their dad to get some good foundation for being a grown-up puppy. So those are some questions you can ask. Um, Caesar's book has a ton of good information in it too. He tells some stories about some good breeders. I'm always impressed when somebody, when I see a breeder who has like little like ribbons or something around the puppy's necks because um, then they can differentiate the, each puppy, like each puppy gets a color um, and they're starting off that leash training thing so the puppy gets used to the sensation of having something around their, their neck. Um, so that's always a good sign of a good breeder. And just general puppy advice, taper your expectations. It's not necessarily going to be like, I brought my puppy home, everything is perfect. It's really, really hard and just have that expectation. Things are gonna go wrong. Your puppy's gonna eat something they're not supposed to. They might have like intestinal issue issues like Albert did. He had um, Giardia for months, uh, just made his poop really yucky. Um, so he was on medication for a long time as a puppy, trying to get rid of that stupid thing. Yeah, and potty training might no not go the way that you think it will. Just be ready for some challenges. It's super fun, totally worth it. You just have to be patient. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Also suggest finding like a group, like we created the Indie Boston's play group. And I wish I had had that when Albert was real little because it would be so nice to just pop on there and ask questions like, have you ever seen this? Or does your puppy do that? And stuff like that. So see if your area has a meetup group or like a play group for your breed. I would love to do at some point like a little adoption story and show you guys some videos and pictures and things. Like Edie's breeder was amazing. Look at this little girl. He was awesome. He did like FaceTime with us. We got to go and visit the puppy um, two weeks before we brought her home. He was just like always in contact with us. He was sending us pictures and videos all the time. Albert's breeder was like pulling teeth to get one picture and it would be like in the middle of the night with horrible lighting and she'd just kind of be like holding him and stuff. There are good and bad breeders so <laughs> and mediocre breeders. Um, but yeah, hopefully these questions helped you if you're looking for a puppy. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I will answer whatever I can or put you in the right direction. Um, again, Caesar's book, super helpful. Love this. <laughs> Get it for sure. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. I'm trying to get to 100, 100 subscribers, which is like this far away. So thank you guys so much. And I will see you next time. Say bye, Eater. <laughs> You're so cute.